Bwana asifiwe sana. Welcome to East Assembly Church online. You can watch us on Facebook Live slash East Assembly Church. My name is Kelvin Masharia, I am MC for today. Allow me to pray as we begin. Father in Jesus name, we bless you. We honor you for this service. We give you all the glory and the praise is all Lord because Father even in this season we still praise you because hakuna mwingine kama wewe. There is none like you. We exalt you and lift you up. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Please leave a comment, like, share as we begin the service. May God bless you. Yeah. 
Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless his holy name. And all that's within me, bless his name. Hallelujah. Amen. Moyo wangu sifu buwana. Shining. 
Nastahili sifa na utukufu wote. Yeye ni mwema. Yeye ni bwana wetu zaidi ya miungu yote. Bwana asifiwe. Haleluya. Anatenda mema kila siku. Tunamsifu, tunamtukuza. Umetenda mema Bwana. Hata kwa siku ya leo bado tutasema kwamba nafasi ya kuweza kuabudu Bwana umetenda mema. Pokea sifa na utukufu. Moyo wangu wa kusifu. Hallelujah. Umetenda mema Bwana moyo wangu wa kusifu umetenda mengi Bwana moyo wangu wa kusifu umefanya mengi Fanya mengi 
sauti yako uweze kumsifu bwana kwa yale ambaye amefanya amekuwa mwema ametulinda hadi wakati huu ametupa nafasi nyingine katika maisha amekuwa mwaminifu wakati sisi si waaminifu ametembea nasi katika kila hatua pokea sifa bwana we bless you name lord we so good to us we give you glory Take your place in our midst, Lord. Even during this time, Lord, we bless your name. Even in the good times, Lord, we bless your name. Even in the confusing times, Lord, we bless your name. Because you're in it. You are everywhere, Lord. You cause order, Lord, even in the times of storms. And so, Father, we pray that there'll be peace in our midst. We pray that, Lord, there'll be order in our midst. We pray that, Lord, there'll be provision in our midst. We pray that, Lord, there'll be love in our midst. Lord, we pray that there'll be forgiveness in our midst. You've done so much, Lord, we cannot tell it all. We give you glory. a moment of prayer based on Psalms 37 verse 7 it says that you are my hiding place you shall preserve me from trouble you shall surround me with songs of deliverance in such a time as this we just need to pray that God's will will be done I want us to pray together in the next five minutes that the Lord will have his way just pray utter a prayer before God begin to declare his goodness over your life yes things are hard Things are difficult, but he has said he will surround you with songs of deliverance. Father, in the name of Jesus, this morning, O Lord, we want to pray that God, you shall be our hiding place. May you hide us from any disease, anything that we are facing, O God, any harm that comes our way. God, may you hide us in Jesus' name. Lord, right now, we do not take anything for granted this morning. But we want to thank you for your grace that surpasses all understanding. We want to thank you because, God, this far that you have brought us, oh God, your word is true, that you shall surround us with songs of deliverance. And in the same verse, it says that you will instruct us and guide us, oh God. Therefore, Father, this morning, may you instruct us through your word. We pray even for the word, the person who will minister to us, that your word, oh God, will be sharper to us, oh God. Your word will deliver us from anything, oh Father. Your word will give us direction, even in this season, oh God. We pray that you may have mercy, oh God. We pray that you may have mercy, oh God. Because, Lord, niwewe peke, umetenda mema. Receive the glory. Receive the honor right now. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it because, Lord, even in this time we know that all things work together for good for they that love you and for them that are the called. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we do pray. 
Amen and amen. Thank you so much. Indeed, the Lord is good even in this time. We have been doing a series of Okoa Jami, and now we're in season two. And I just want to say that God created man in his own image and after his likeness, and he created us to relate with each other and more so with him. And I just want to say that man was never created to be alone, but he was created to fellowship. And so I'd like us to just appreciate the minister of the word as he come and shares God's word, Pastor Elvis Irungu. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Uh, we want to welcome you from wherever you are in the comforts of your houses. We are continuing with the Okoa Jami series. Actually, we are finishing today. And I am going to be focusing on overcoming the loneliness of singlehood. We ministered to men in our church. We ministered to families. But we also discovered that we have quite a huge chunk of single people in our church and we said we will minister to them today but the message will be a blessing to those who are married as well let's pray for the word heavenly father we thank you and we bless your name at this time god as i speak to your people i pray that they will get the truths from your word, truths that will change their lives. This I pray, trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Bishop sends greetings. Bishop Tembu is all the way in Western Kenya, and he's stuck there for now. So, we talk about overcoming loneliness in singlehood. Contrary to popular opinion that single people are unhappy, research shows that single people, some single people, some, they're not unhappy about their situation. They're actually happier than their married counterparts. Contrary to their popular opinion that single people are disjointed, Socially, research shows us that they are more connected than their married counterparts. That is, some single people. You see, some single people have a very big network of friends. And because of that network of friends, they are happy. They are socially connected with people. And single people, according to research, they are more connected with their parents. Single people are more connected with their siblings. Single people are more connected with their workmates. Single people are ready to help people more. They help with yard work. They help people repair cars. They help people with repairs in their houses. They help people do shopping. They help people with childcare. Single people are not unhappy. Actually, single people, according to research, some single people give more advice and more support to people than their married counterparts. You see, when people get married, they tend to lock others out of their lives. But single people, some single people open their lives to more people. And these people are not unhappy. Yes, friends do not take a place of a spouse in their lives, but they are not unhappy. Actually, mentally, they have more or they have better mental health than their married counterparts. And they are happier than their married counterparts. So, all is not gloom for single people. Now, on the other side, on the flip side, there are single people who are unhappy. 
They are happy about what they have achieved. They are happy about their education. They are happy about their jobs, their status in life. But they are not happy about their condition. They are not happy about the fact that they don't have friends. They are lonely. They are lonely. They are also, or there is another group of single people that is very unhappy. This group, when they leave work, get into their car, drive home. While they're going home, they are crying. While they get into their houses, they open the door and find an empty house. They cry. Why do they cry? Because they have no friends. When they go to sleep and find an empty bed, they cry. Why? They are alone and they don't have friends. You see, these people are like a flask that is yearning to be filled, but there is no one to fill it. Loneliness has become to them colder than a glacier blanket from Iceland. It's a problem. And life should not be lived like this. God did not design man to live like that. That kind of a life is not good for man. God wants man to have a network of people around him. What does the Bible say about it? Let us look at the Bible, the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter number four. And I will read. This is what the Bible says, Ecclesiastes four, from verse 9 to 12. Two people are better than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm. But how can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. So what is God trying to tell us here? God is trying to discourage the idea of not singlehood, but the idea of aloneness, the idea of aloofness, the idea of solitariness. That is what God is trying to discourage in this particular uh, portion of the Bible. So this is what the Bible says, that if someone is walking alone and he falls, if there are two, the other one will lift him up. If two people are traveling, maybe they are on a chariot and one falls over. If there are two, the other one will pick him up. But if one is alone using a chariot and falls off from a chariot, to pick himself up will not be easy. It will be difficult. So the Bible says, woe, woe is that person. Woe. It's because he's alone. Woe unto him who is alone. So aloneness is what God is discouraging. Not singlehood, but aloneness. The Bible also continues and says, if you are alone and you are attacked by thugs, you might be easily overpowered. But if you are two or three, you can stand your ground back to back and fight off the threat. So you see, being two is better than one. If you are two or three, you are better than one. So God is still discouraging the idea of aloneness, not singlehood. And then the Bible continues and says that a cord of two or three is better. You see, if a cord if cords have been weaved like three cords, they are harder to break than one cord. So again, God is against the idea of aloneness, not singlehood. You see, if a person has no spouse, 
or friends, either of the two. If he's just alone, he has no one to help him if he's in problems. If a person has no spouse or friends, he has no one to lift him out of maybe poverty if he gets into poverty. If a person is alone, he has no spouse or friends and needs someone to pray for him, he can get anyone to pray for him. If a person is just alone like this, no spouse, no friend, and he gets into spiritual error, he has no one to show him his error because he's alone. He's just alone. If you need help, you have no one to help you. You are alone. So God is against or discouraging the idea of just withdrawing from people and being alone. No man is at his or her best alone. God also continues to speak in that text. He says, a person who has no spouse or friends, that person is cold. He's cold. He's no one to warm his heart. He's a flask, empty, yearning to be filled, but there is no one to fill it. You see, God is saying this. If you are alone at night, maybe it's during winter, how will you keep yourself warm? Remember, that was those days. Nowadays, people have blankets that can warm them, you know, even electronically. But those days, there was no one to warm. If you needed warmth at night, you needed to have another person by your side. Now, the book of Exodus, chapter number 22, verse 26 to 27, makes it clear. It says, if you loan someone some money and take his clock as surety for that, God says, by evening, you should return his clock. Because that clock might be the only blanket that he uses at night. And... If he goes to sleep without it, he will cry to God because he's feeling cold. And if he cries to God, God will hear him because he's merciful. And when he hears, the person who took the clock will be in trouble with God. So this opens our eyes somewhere. The Israelites who were poor didn't have blankets. They were using their clocks, their coats. So they would use their coats during the day and at night they would cover themselves with their coats. So what if it was during the winter? Their coats would not be enough. So single people who were poor and could not afford blankets used to sleep together to warm each other, covering themselves with their clocks to make each other warm. If you slept alone, you suffered the consequences of winter if you're poor. So God is saying a person who is alone, alone like this, he is withdrawn from people, no spouse, no friends, he's cold. And so you see, a person who is alone, he has no friends, he has no spouse, has no one to encourage him. He is cold. He needs warmth, but he's cold. When he's discouraged, he has no one to encourage him. When he needs comfort, he has no one to comfort him when he's discomforted. When he needs an honest opinion, he has none. If he needs some wisdom, he has none. He has no spouse, no friends. If this person needs to talk to someone. He has no spouse, he has no friends, he or she has no one to speak to. This person has no one to crack jokes with. And if you have no friend, no spouse, you don't have anyone to spend time with. You're just cold, cold, no warmth. You see, a person who chooses aloneness 
a person who chooses to withdraw from people is like this. This person is like if you take calls, you take two calls, moja hapa na ingine pale. Ukiziweka pale na pale, and they are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are burning, if you put them asunder, they will go off. But if you bring them together, if they are like three, they burn brightly, and they generate a lot of warmth. That is the essence of being together, the essence of being together. Someone said that if a person has no friends, he has no spouse, he is like a person who has a right hand but no left hand. He is suffering from loneliness. Loneliness. So God discourages loneliness. I mean, being alone, aloneness. God discourages it. God is not against singlehood, but God is against aloneness. He's against it. No man was made to be alone. Even God lives in Trinity. God is a Trinity. Father, Son, the Spirit. And we are made in His image. We are made to talk with people. Therefore, withdrawing from people and having no friends is an idea that God discourages. God wants us to have people. He wants us to have a network of people. You see, God wants us to be in communion with people. God wants us to be in companionship with people, either a spouse or people. God wants us to be in a fellowship of people. Now, how do you get friends? How do you get into a network? Proverbs 24, verse 18. A man who has friends is himself friendly. And there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. You see? A person who wants to have friends, that person must be friendly himself. First and foremost, Proverbs 18.24 is the other way around. Proverbs 18.24. That person must be friendly. A man who has friends must himself be friendly. So if you want to have friends to take away the loneliness, you have to be friendly. You have to look for friends. So how do you make friends? How do you get friends? This is how you get friends. One, come to a church like this. When you go to a church, you will get friends. If your intention is to make friends, you will get friends in a church. When you come to a church like this, volunteer, get into groups, you can get into the choir, you can become an usher, you can be in the youth department, you can join the women's group, you can join cell groups. In those groups, there is an opportunity to make friends if you have no friends. Join groups. The other thing is that you can join classes of things that you're passionate about. If it is classes of dancing, if it is classes of what? If you want to go to the gym, you can join the gym. Swimming classes, you can join swimming classes. Taekwondo classes, you can join taekwondo classes or karate classes. And you're going to make friends there. You can join a football club and play football there with people. You can go play basketball with people. Therein lies the potential to make friends. No one should be alone in life. Something else that you should do when you go there is talk to people. Talk to people. Talk to them about their children. Ask them about their children. They will tell you a lot of stories. That's how you begin to make friends. And don't just go once or twice. Uh-uh. End up a sikunyingi sana. Just go there. Be there. Be there and be a part of the group. 
Talk about their pets. Ask them about their pets. Doggy too. What a what your story nyingi sana za doggy. It's an opportunity to make friendships. Ask them about their hobbies. They will tell you a, a lot of things about their hobbies. And ask open-ended questions about the weather, about many things. Ask hypothetical questions, but don't ask or talk politics with people and friends. They will chase away people. Something else that you can do to make more friends is this. Keep your phone away and talk to people. Just talk to people. Just talk to people. Keep the phone away. Some people go to a place, it's a seminar. During lunch hour, tea break, they remove the phone. They are losing an opportunity to make a friend. It's an opportunity lost. In Matatu, on phone. You are missing an opportunity to make a friend. Really. Something else that we can do to make friends. There are people there that you can do. Friends of your friends. That's an opportunity to make friends. Make friends. And make time for friends. There is nothing like friendship by flukes. Friendships are made intentionally. Yes, and you have to invest time to make friendships. You must invest time. So loneliness is actually a choice. God is against loneliness. It's a choice. It's a choice. And loneliness has woes. It's cold. It's terrible. No one was made to stay alone. We were made to live in networks of friends. So we need to have networks of friends to kick away loneliness. God wants us to be happy, but he knows that we cannot be happy when we are lonely. Single people are encouraged to get friends in the Bible because they are not married. People who are married are also encouraged to get more friends. It's a principle of life that God has given us. Two are better than one. Three are even better. When you have more friends, it's even better. When I started, I said, the research has shown that some single people are happier than married people. What is the reason? It's because they have a big, big network of friends that they talk to. Anytime they have a problem, they call them. Talk to them, they share their secrets with them. They are connected to them. And that keeps loneliness at bay. So loneliness is a choice that you don't have to take. When life presents loneliness to you, say no. Go make friends. God wants you to have friends. Friends are going to give you better mental health. If you're going to be happier because you have friends, your mental health will also be better. And research has shown that people, and especially elderly people, who have no friends, that they tend to get BP and very poor quality of sleep. Solution, get friends. And God will help you make friends. Singleness, no. Loneliness is a choice. Don't take it. Go for friends. God bless you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, because we're made in your image. And Lord, you discourage us from withdrawing from people. We realize, oh God, that you're trying to tell us that we are better with people than without people. And we pray, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that you will help us as we go out there to make friendships, that you will help us to get good friends so that we can also improve the quality of our lives.
pray, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that you help us. From today, O oh God, I pray, help you people to look for friends and to shun aloneness, to shun this life of separating themselves from people. Thank you, Lord. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Elvis, for the word that you have shared, telling us that it's not good to be alone. Uh, I'd like to call upon the praise and worship as it's time to give. And uh, the pay bill is 904801. 904801. You can indicate the type of offering you're giving, whether it is your tithe, it's your offering or thanksgiving, whatever it may be. 9048. Zero 01 as indicated uh, another announcement is that uh, one will be having the tuesday prayers on zoom from 8 p.m to 8 30 p.m so we'll still continue with prayers and then the second announcement is that uh, there's uh, the prayer and fasting week which will begin from the 5th to 18th of april where we'll be praying and fasting concerning the ministration of Bishop Dio, which he came to share God's word. So again, we're still continuing, but the difference is that we are online. So ashes kindly wait on us as we, as you give not ashes, but give online, all right? God bless you. We are more than conquerors. We are winners in Christ. Amen. We win in Jesus' name.
just received a message about loneliness and especially now that we have the curfews in place uh, we know that this is a timely message and that you need to be reminded of uh, that biblical perspective on how to handle it and like the singers have said our we wrestle and our weapons are weapons that come from God and so as we come to a close and as we think about loneliness uh, it may be a moment that you'd be wondering, uh, why am I not reunited with my father who is at Kitangela or some place in Turkana and that you're unable to reunite yourself to him? Just remember the word that you've received today on loneliness. And probably you're also wondering, how can I have healthy interaction? Uh, the preacher has already said it, interact around the word of God. Call your family together, watch something godly like what we are doing on Facebook and just make sure that your loneliness is done away with. We are going to pray or we are going to do the benediction and as we do it, may the Lord grant you strength and may the Lord uh, take away every possibility of loneliness during this curfew season. Revelation chapter 1 verses 5, I'm going to read the benediction and as I do that, uh, may the Lord bless you. You're probably at work. You're probably at home. Uh, you're probably somewhere in a bus watching this. We want to encourage you. God will give you strength as you give yourself to him on matters related to loneliness. Let me read Revelation 1 to 5. It says, To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priests to his God, and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May you experience God's love as you tackle loneliness all through the week and uh, all through the curfew season. God bless you and God be with you.
Christ who set us free. Ah. 